Now, in 2022, remember the war breaks out in February 2022. If you go from February 2022 to the end of the year, let's say December 31st, 2022, over that time period, the Ukrainians do very well. They do very well. Uh, the Russians are slow to mobilize, and the Russians are not a highly efficient fighting force at that point in time. And we're beginning to think in 2022 that we're going to beat the Russians, push them out of the Donbass, push them out of Crimea, and really maybe even knock them out of the ranks of the great powers. So we're playing hardball with the Russians. But what the Russians do in the end, at the end of September 2022 is they mobilize 300,000 men and they begin to learn how to fight on the battlefield. And then over the course of 2023, the year that we're now in, they are raising an additional 425,000 men. And they have an industrial base that allows them to produce huge amounts of artillery, huge numbers of tanks, huge numbers of aircraft, huge numbers of helicopters, right? The Ukrainians don't have that capability. They depend on us. And you know what? We ran down our industrial base during the unipolar moment. We do not, we in the West, this includes Australia, we do not collectively have the capability to produce lots of artillery tubes, artillery shells, tanks, and so forth and so on. The Russians do. Now, why does this matter? What you want to understand about this war between Ukraine and Russia is it's a war of attrition. It's Muhammad Ali, right, and Joe Frazier standing toe-to-toe, -to -toe, pounding the living daylights out of each other. That's what it is. Think World War I on the Western Front, okay? That's the kind of war this is. Nothing fancy about this one. Question you want to ask yourself is, who wins in a war of attrition where two armies are head-to-head? -head? Two factors matter. The population size of each country, because that tells you how many soldiers you can send to the front, population size, and how much artillery each side has. Uh, when I went to West Point and I was in the American military, we were taught that artillery is the king of battle. Right? And a war of attrition, that is certainly true. So the question is, what does the population ratio look like between the two sides? What's the artillery ratio look like? You want to know what the population ratio is? It's five to one in the Russians' favor. You want to know what the artillery ratio looks like? It's somewhere between five to one and ten to one. And most people think it's 10 to 1 at this point in time in the Russians' favor. And we cannot, we in the West cannot rectify that imbalance. So you have the situation where the Ukrainians are outnumbered, population-wise, 5 to 1. They're outnumbered probably 7 to 1, 10 to 1 in terms of artillery. Can't improve either one of those situations. And in a war of attrition, that's the kiss of death. And furthermore, on top of all that, as you know, they launched a counteroffensive on 4 June of this year. My God, the Ukrainians have suffered enormous casualties with these offensives. We have encouraged them to attack the Russians. It was foolish in the extreme, in my opinion. The Ukrainians should have remained on the defensive. They have suffered such casualties. And they already were down 5 to 1 population-wise and down in terms of artillery. They're going to lose. They're going to lose. There's no way the Ukrainians can win.